So our topic this morning is engaging the university. And I want to explain as simply as I can what I mean by the expression engaging the university. I understand this at two levels. So I'll call the first level A and try to explain what I mean by it and then explain level B. Uh, here is the world of church. The first circle and the second circle is the university. So think of a, a typical university campus. Uh, some of our IFES groups are not allowed to meet in university. So they would meet, say, in church buildings. So even though they are studying in the university as students, their activities all take place within church buildings. They would have Bible study groups and discussions and sometimes perhaps even invite their friends to meetings in church buildings. And one thing that I notice is that often the discussions are very church-centered. They rarely would talk about what is happening in the world of the university. And that is true even if the group is allowed to meet in a university. Say it's a recognized Christian society on campus. But often the Christian activities that take place are very church-centered activities. And occasionally, people would invite non-Christian friends to come and join their meetings, whether it's a, a sort of an evangelistic Bible study or an alpha course. Or occasionally, they would invite speakers, evangelists from uh, the church to come into the university and conduct so-called missions. Now, I'm not against that, but I think it's a very limited way of actually... Uh, engaging in ministry in the university. Because there are very, very few non-Christians in our universities who would ever turn up at a Christian meeting. So often we are only reaching the people who are on the periphery, who have shown an active interest. And we like having these meetings because we are the ones in control, we are in the majority, and our non-Christian friends and neighbors are in the minority and often feeling fairly insecure with us. So uh, I want to change this whole understanding of university mission or university ministry. I want to move it towards a different model. And maybe I could redraw this. So here we have the church. and the university, but we have Christian fellowships, Christian groups that overlap both the world of the church and the world of the university. Whether they are unable to meet in the university physically or not is irrelevant because the university authorities cannot prevent Christian students from actually entering into all the conversations and activities that make up university life. So they can join an environmental society or that's concerned about environmental issues. They can join, say, the uh, astronomy society. Uh, they can even go and join, uh, say, a Buddhist society and engage with Buddhist students in that way. And so here you have a university group that is encouraging its students to enter all the conversations that make up the life of a university the informal conversations that go on in student hostels, but also those formal conversations that we call academic disciplines. And then they, as they engage with non-Christian students and join conversations that they themselves have not started, and they try to take those conversations in a new direction, they are bringing a Christian voice as well as a Christian presence into the university. But then they, in turn, will be challenged by the non-Christians with whom they are now associating. And so they will also bring questions that their non-Christian students are asking into their Bible study groups, into their Christian meetings, and then discussing together how they should respond to those questions. Uh, some of those questions may come not only from their non-Christian 
uh, friends, but also from their lecturers. Supposing a Christian student were to come and share in their Bible study group that their lecturer this morning said something disparaging about, say, Christian missionaries, claiming that all Christian missionaries have uh, uh, destroyed native indigenous cultures and just imposed a Western European sort of mindset on local people. How then should we respond to that? Is it true? And so in the group, there is now a discussion going on about how to respond. And that involves deeper study. And I see the role of the staff workers who work with these Christian student groups as the link between the church and the group. So the staff worker brings all the resources of the wider Christian church. Some of those resources may be people, gifted people, who have studied that particular issue and who can come and speak to the Christian students about it. It may be books that they should be reading. It could be websites that they should be visiting that contain information, resources that they can access to go back and then engage their lecturers as well as their fellow students in meaningful conversations. Or supposing a Christian student comes from a very narrow conservative church where he or she has been taught that you must read the early chapters of Genesis in a very literal way, that God literally made the world in six days. And then they find that their, their teacher, their biology teacher, says that creationism is, 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 uh, is dead. It's, uh, it's been replaced by a theory of evolution. And they somehow are then struggling how to think in terms of evolution in their biology classroom and think in terms of creation as Christians. And so again, they come with those questions into their Christian fellowships. They are given resources by other students or by the staff. Their understanding of creation now deepens and widens. They learn to distinguish between the doctrine of creation and what is called creationism as a physical theory of origins. So you see, they are also deepening their understanding of Christian faith, as well as then going back and challenging the view that somehow evolution is contradictory to Christian doctrine, and that you cannot think of evolution within the framework of a theology of creation. So this is what I call a dialogical ministry because it's not all one way, it's two ways. It's not just Christians going and preaching to others, but it's also Christians learning through their real engagement in the conversations that make up university life. So they are bringing a Christian voice into every area of university life, as well as being challenged by their experience of university to deepen their own understanding of the faith that they profess. And those conversations sometimes involve justice issues, especially in developing countries. Often students go on strike over some issue that they see as a social injustice. So again, Christian students, whenever they meet, should be discussing how should we respond, say, to this strike? What can we do as a Christian group, however small we are, to do something about a perceived injustice in the university? So we are committed to making the university a more just, a more humane place for students to study. It might be something that we find an international student, for example, is suffering from loneliness, isolation, even discrimination. And the Christian students, when they meet, are discussing now, how can we address that issue? So this is a body of Christians who are bringing the resources of the whole Christian church to bear on the life of the university. Whether or not they physically are able to meet in the university is really not relevant. And sometimes being unable to meet in the university might actually be a good thing because they don't then stay in their little uh, Christian ghettos on campus, but they actually enter into all of university life. So this is an incarnational ministry because the ownership of this ministry is in the hands of these students and their Christian professors and administrators who are actually living and working in the university. And it's also a dialogical ministry 
because it involves both courage of speaking and also humble listening. So that's the first level at which I speak of, uh, of engaging the university, uh, and it has to do with undergraduate students. The second level at which we want to engage the university is really an extension of level A. So here we have not just undergraduate student fellowships or cell groups or whatever, but we also have research students, we have professors or lecturers who are Christians, who else? Well, we have college administrators. all of whom make up the life of a university. And so we would like to see in all these university campuses, not only undergraduates meeting together, but also professors and their research students also meeting across academic disciplines, first of all to discuss how their Christian faith impacts their particular academic discipline, but also how collectively they can bear witness to the gospel uh, in this university setting. And that would mean, like I said earlier, looking at some of the issues of injustice, of discrimination, of corruption in the university, and thinking of how they can somehow be salt and light in that context. But it's also how they can promote what Christ is concerned about, how they can discern where Christ is present and active in university life, whether it's the music class, whether it's the laboratory, whether it's the radio astronomy center, discerning the presence of Christ and then articulating that presence to their colleagues. So there again, they need to be studying and they need to be resourced. And perhaps we may need to have some specialist staff who can work with Christian professors and research students, staff who themselves have had some experience doing research who are not insecure when they have to meet with professors and argue with them and challenge the shallowness of their Christian faith, uh, staff who can advise them as to what particular books they should be reading in their particular field, whether it's economics or law or biology or whatever. And then we also want to see some of those Christian professors and research students feeding back into the undergraduate groups and looking for the bright graduates and encouraging them to think of actually becoming academic researchers and mentoring them in their Christian walk. So that even though the undergraduates and the research students and professors meet separately, still there are links, there are relational links between them. One thing that these uh, Christian professors and research students could also do is influence the whole research agenda of the university and say, well, let's try to promote research that actually uh, advances uh, the cause of social justice, research that doesn't widen the gap between the rich and the poor in our country, but research that actually benefits the poor, that addresses real social ills and social needs. And in this way also, they're acting as salt and light in the context of the university. So this is really our vision when we speak of engaging the university. Uh, in some of our movements in IFES, we are not able to reach level B because we have hardly any Christian research scholars or professors or administrators. But the vision should be as we work at level A, to eventually have people who will become research scholars and professors and administrators in our universities. Because we are committed to seeing the universities flourishing as humane and just institutions and to see Christian 
professors and researchers and administrators and students really living out the Lordship of Jesus in the world of the university. Thank you.